The Big Bang is a scientific theory for both the origin and development of our universe. It states that the universe started in a fantastically small volume that was unimaginably hot with a very high energy density. Then from that point, the Big Bang describes how the universe expands into the form it has today. When the Big Bang Theory was proposed, it demonstrated that the universe had a beginning. And many scientists were very uncomfortable with that assertion for very philosophical and theological reasons. Specifically, that suggests that there was something outside of the universe that began it, and that suggests that there was a creator, and many scientists were very uncomfortable with that idea. Before the Big Bang became the most accepted theory, scientists believed that the universe was very likely eternal, and it was always the same. The steady state theory is a eternal theory for the universe, but what it states is that the universe is always expanding, and what happens is between the galaxies, new matter is being created. And then that matter eventually turns into new galaxies. So on average, the universe looks approximately the same, although it's always expanding. This model allowed scientists to believe that this process had been happening eternally in the past, so there was no beginning. Another proposed model for the universe is referred to as the oscillating model. And the idea is that the universe expands, it then stops, it then contracts, and then goes back into a very small state where it bounces and starts to expand again. So the universe is essentially oscillating repeatedly for eternity, and that could have happened eternally into the past. The Big Bang Theory was initially opposed by many scientists, and they had alternative versions for the universe, such as the steady state model and the oscillating model. But those models were eventually proven to be implausible also, positive evidence for the Big Bang was discovered. For instance, you have the discovery of the microwave background radiation, which was perfectly predicted by the Big Bang model, and you also saw that the ages of galaxies was what you would expect from a Big Bang model. George Lemaitre was a Belgian priest and astronomer, and he was a pioneer in the theory of the Big Bang in the early 1900s. He was the first to recognize that the fact that galaxies are moving away from us indicates that space itself is expanding. Also, he was the first to propose that the universe started in an infinitely hot, dense state, which eventually expanded into the universe we see today. And that is exactly what the Big Bang model describes now. When Lemaitre proposed this idea that the universe started a, in a, essentially a bang and then expanded, many scientists were very uncomfortable with that. In fact, Einstein basically dismissed his model and said that it was unscientific. What happened is Einstein actually developed general relativity, which is the foundation of the Big Bang model. And when he looked at the equations he derived, he recognized that they suggested the universe was either expanding or contracting but he believed the universe was static. It just always stayed the same. So what he did was he came up with a solution to his equations that allowed for a static universe. And the way he did that was he proposed a cosmological constant. And this constant essentially acts as a force that causes the universe to expand. And what he did was he perfectly chose that constant so that the force that expanded the universe exactly matched out gravity which was contracting the universe, so the universe would always stay the same. Einstein eventually realized that proposing that cosmological constant was the biggest blunder of his life because he could have been the one that predicted the Big Bang. Edwin Hubble was an astronomer who helped to prove that the universe was expanding. And the way he did that was he observed galaxies far from our galaxy. And he noticed that they were moving away from us. And he also recognized that the speed at which they moved away from us on average was proportional to the distance the galaxies were from the Earth. And that formed the famous Hubble's Law. 
Now, George Lamatra came to the same conclusion previously. So both of them demonstrated that our universe had to be expanding. Uh, what helped to demonstrate the truth of the Big Bang Theory was the observation that galaxies that are distant from us are moving away from us. And the further away the galaxy is, the faster it's moving away from us. And that demonstrates that the universe is a lot like a balloon. Let me use an analogy. If you have a balloon and you imagine putting dots on that balloon to represent galaxies, and then that balloon inflates, what happens is all the dots move away from each other. And dots that are further apart will move away from each other even faster. And that's exactly the sort of evidence we see in our universe. As the evidence for the Big Bang was accumulating in the mid 20th century, many scientists were accepting it, but some still held, it, held out. But the definitive evidence that's, that proved it came in the 1960s by physicist Arno Penzias and radio astronomer Robert Wilson. What they were doing is they were listening to signals from space. And what they found was that there was this very faint background radiation. And they eventually realized that the properties of this radiation, both its temperature and its frequency spectrum, perfectly matched the prediction of the Big Bang model. Specifically, the model predicted that there would be kind of an afterglow from the Big Bang that would be a low temperature signal that matched what's called a black body radiation spectrum. And that's exactly what was discovered. So their discovery essentially clinched the story that the Big Bang was true, and it buried and laid to waste the steady state model for the universe. The Big Bang makes belief in God that much more scientifically valid because it demonstrates that all of time, space, matter, and energy began at a specific point in the past. And since nothing begins itself, something outside of time had to start it. And that something had to be infinitely powerful and it had to be personal because only a personal being can choose to create. There currently are some critics of the Big Bang Theory. So for instance, Paul Steinhardt and Anna Aegis have proposed a new version of the oscillating universe model. Now the old version was rejected because if a universe expands and then contracts and then bounces and expands, the entropy of the universe constantly increases. So each expansion actually takes longer. So if you go into the past, eventually it would have been an infinitely fast expansion, which also implies a beginning. The way they got around this problem is they suggested that there was some mechanism that at the bounce essentially reset the entropy to a very low value. The problem with this model is that we have never seen any mechanism even remotely similar to it. So before that model can be even considered, they have to make a strong case that such a mechanism is plausible, which they have not yet done. Another modern model that's been presented in opposition to the Big Bang model is called the internal inflation model. And that's the idea that space is expanding very, very rapidly. It's inflating, and that has been happening internally. And what happens is different regions of space become what are called bubble universes, where they stop inflating, and then they expand according to the standard Big Bang model. So our universe is simply one of those bubble universes that happen to begin, but all of space has been inflating eternally. The problem with that model is that there is a theorem presented called the bohr guth vilenkin theorem, which demonstrates that inflating universes in all models that are realistic had to have a beginning. The view that the universe was eternal was widely accepted by most atheists because what that did is it removed the need to explain the beginning of the universe. However, when the evidence for a beginning became irrefutable, that created a very, very serious problem because now there is clear evidence that there was something outside of time and space that created the universe from nothing or ex nihilo, which points back to the religious belief in a creator. The Big Bang Theory is still being challenged because many people are deeply uncomfortable with the philosophical implications. 
Because the Big Bang suggests that there was a beginning to everything, that implies that something had to begin it outside of time and space. And that points to the idea of a creator, and many people are very uncomfortable accepting that possibility. All the scientific evidence suggests that the universe did have a beginning. So because of Einstein's equations of general relativity, they demonstrate that because the universe is expanding now, if you go back in time, it must have started at a particular point. In addition, there is a theorem put out called the bord guth vilenkin theorem that was proposed by several famous physicists, and it demonstrates that all universes that are on average expanding had to have a beginning and our universe matches that criteria. Some physicists have challenged the idea of a beginning by pointing out the fact that general relativity would not apply in the earliest stages of the universe when everything was extremely small. They also mention that at that point, a quantum mechanics has to apply, so that's when you end up with what are called quantum cosmology models. This criticism actually is not valid, because if you follow general relativity, it applies all the way to the point where the universe was exceedingly small, uh, less than the width of an atom. So although general relativity breaks down at that point, it is by all approximation a singularity and a very dense ball that also still had to start at some point in the past. Some physicists have argued that because the universe started in a very small state, quantum mechanics supplies. And that's why they came up with what are called quantum cosmology models for the universe. They then argue that the universe could have popped into existence through some sort of quantum fluctuation. The problem is that they're making a very serious mistake. Quantum mechanics or any physical law only applies when a universe exists. It can't explain how a universe came into existence because before that existence, the laws had no causal power. Some physicists such as Sean Carroll have proposed that the universe extended eternally into the past. And the basic idea is that the Big Bang represents a point where the universe expanded into the future, but also expanded eternally into the past. The problem is that that model is completely implausible. It has to propose that there is an infinitely large universe, infinitely in the past, which is philosophically problematic. It also has to assume there is infinite fine tuning that would have caused that entire universe to compact into a very small low entropy state. And that also is completely implausible. So all universes that are plausible have to point to a beginning. Uh, many physicists have pointed out the fact that general relativity suggests if you go back in time, the universe started as what's called a singularity. And a singularity is simply a point of, that's infinitely small and infinitely dense. Now the problem is that general relativity breaks down when the universe gets that small. So we can't say that the universe started in a true singularity, but general relativity applies all the way to the point that the universe was smaller than an atom. So we can definitely say it started as an approximate singularity and it had to start at some point in the past. Many people have proposed that the creation is self-contained. It does not need anything outside itself to get it going. But that claim is in complete conflict with the scientific evidence because the scientific evidence shows that everything, time, matter, space, and energy all began at a moment in the past. That means there had to be something outside of our universe that started it. So the question becomes, is the universe eternal or is there some set of laws that are eternal or is there a personal being that's eternal? Everyone has to believe that something is eternal and started everything else. And the scientific evidence points to the fact that that something is a mind that created all of physical reality. Uh, some have proposed that our universe is simply one in an infinite number of other universes. For instance, the eternal inflation model proposes that space has always been expanding. 
And what happens is that in that space, certain regions stop expanding and become what are called bubble universes. So our universe is simply one bubble universe that stopped expanding in this infinite space. And what happens is people believe that this could have been happening eternally. The problem is, because of what's called the bord guth vilenkin theorem, even these expanding universe models still must have had a beginning. Uh, physicist Lawrence Krauss actually wrote a book called The Universe from Nothing. And he argues that the universe could have come into existence due to quantum cosmology. So basically the universe is simply a product of its own laws, so it does not need an external agent to get it going. This claim is completely false, because if you look at the research he cites and the research claims of other physicists like Stephen Hawking, what you find is that the mathematics that support their claims actually doesn't demonstrate a universe coming from nothing, but it presupposes that a universe has already come into existence in something approximate to a singularity. And then the physics describes how that, physics, how that universe develops. So the universe did not come from nothing, as Krauss claimed, but it came from an existing universe in a very small state. Now, some physicists have proposed that perhaps the laws of nature have an existence outside of our universe. That actually doesn't make sense because the laws of nature describe what happens in an existing universe. So for instance, the law of gravity describes how a rock will fall to the earth and that can be described by a very simple equation. But that equation does not make the rock and the earth come into existence. It simply explains what happens when they're close to each other. In the same way, the laws that describe the early development of the universe cannot explain how the universe came into existence. Now, some physicists have argued that the laws could have an existence separate from our physical universe. The problem is when people postulate that idea, people like Alexander Vilenkin, they eventually come to realize that the only place that laws or mathematics can exist is in a mind. So even that proposal points back to a creator. Uh, physicists such as Lawrence Krauss have proposed that you could get something from nothing. And that explains how our universe came into existence. The problem is that they're misrepresenting the actual science. Because it is the case that from quantum mechanics, you can have, let's say, a particle and an antiparticle pair pop into existence. And then most often they simply uh, combine and go out of existence. The problem is the laws that describe that process work in an existing universe. So before the universe existed, the laws of quantum mechanics did not operate because they only operate with physical matter.